In today's video, I'm going to give you a list of basic integration formulas that will be helpful for you for those who are taking Calculus 1 and even uh, the beginning portions of Calculus 2. So here's the first one. The integral of a dx is equal to ax plus c. Now I'm going to show you how to use some of these formulas. Not all because there's a lot of integration formulas out there. So a is a constant. Let's say if you want to integrate the constant 5, it's simply going to be 5x plus c. e is a constant. So e without the x, this is just going to be e times x plus c. Negative 7 is a constant. So the integral of negative 7 dx will be negative 7x plus c. So that's how you can use the first formula. Now the next one, which is associated with the power rule, is this. When you have a variable raised to the constant n, the antiderivative of x to the n will be x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. So here's an example. Let's say if you want to find the antiderivative of x squared, simply add 1 to 2, which is 3, and then divide by that result. Let's say if you want to find the antiderivative of x cubed plus 5x to the 6. So for x cubed, it's going to be add 1 to the exponent, divide by that result. So x to the 4 over 4. And then for x to the 6, it's just x to the 7 over 7, and then plus c. So that's how you can use this formula. By the way, for the first example, that formula works as well. If you see it this way, 5 is the same as 5 times x to the 0, because anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So when you add 1 and then divide by 1, you're going to end up with 5x. Now, here's the next formula to know. The antiderivative of 8x plus b raised to the n it's going to be 1 over a times ax plus b. And basically, you're using the power rule on this. Raised to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. So let's put this into practice. Let's say if I have 5x raised to the 7th power. The 1 over a represents the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of ax plus b is just a. The derivative of 5x is 5. So a is going to be 5. Then we're going to have the original expression, 5x. We're going to add 1 to 7. So n plus 1, that's 8. And then we're going to divide by that result, and then plus c. So this is going to be 5x to the 8th power over 40 plus c. All right, here's another example. Let's say we have 3x plus 7 raised to the fourth power. So we can see that a, the number in front of x, is 3. So it's going to be 1 over 3. And then times the original expression, 3x plus 7. But we're going to add 1 to 4. So that's going to be 5, and then divide by that result. So now we can write this as 3 times 5, 1 over 15, 3x plus 7 raised to the fifth power. By the way, for those of you who want a printout of all these formulas, check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to post the formula sheet that's going to contain all these, all of the formulas that you'll see here. Now, whenever you want to integrate rational functions um, of degree 1 in the denominator, like this, you're going to get the natural log function. The antiderivative of 1 over x is ln x. Keep in mind, the derivative of ln u is u prime over u. So the antiderivative of this will give you ln u. So if you want to write that as a formula, you could see it this way.
Another similar version to the first one is this, 1 over ax plus b, very similar to 1 over x. This is 1 over a ln ax plus b. So let's say if I have 1 over 3x. For this one, you really don't need to use the formula. You can move out the 3 to the front. And this is just 1 third. And this part is going to give you ln x. So it's 1 third ln x plus c. Now, if you had a problem that looks like this, let's say 1 over 4x plus 5, then this formula will be very helpful. A, we can see is 4, so it's 1 fourth. In this case, A was 3 in this problem. And then it's going to be the natural log of what we started with on the denominator, and then plus C. So 1 fourth ln 4x plus 5 plus C. So that's how you could use uh, this formula. Now, let's move on to the integration of exponential functions. So the integral of e to the x dx is just e to the x. Now the integral of e to the ax plus b, it's similar but with a few differences. It's going to be 1 over a e to the ax plus b plus c. So I'm going to give you a few examples. The integral of e raised to the 3x is going to be a is 3, so it's 1 third e to the 3x plus c. The integral of e to the 5x plus 2, a is 5, so it's going to be 1 fifth e to the 5x plus 2, and then plus c. So that's how you could find the antiderivative of exponential functions with the base e. Now sometimes you may have an exponential function that doesn't have the base e. So let's use a instead. So a raised to the bx plus d. We need to save c for the constant at the end. So it's going to be 1 over b and then times a to the bx plus d, but it's going to be divided by ln a. So I'm going to rewrite it differently. So it's what you started with before, a raised to the bx plus d. Now instead of 1 over b, I'm just going to put b on the bottom, but you also need to multiply it by ln a. For the previous equation, ln e is 1, so that's why you don't see it there. But ln a is not 1, so you need to put it there. So that's the formula to find the antiderivative for an exponential function when the base is not e. So let's say we have 4 raised to the 3x. In this case, b is 3, a is 4. So we're going to start with the original problem on top, 4 raised to the 3x, divided by b, which is 3, and then ln a, a is 4, and then plus c. So now let's say we have 7 raised to the 2x plus 5. So we're going to have the original problem on top, 7 raised to the 2x plus 5 divided by b is 2 in this example, a is 7, so it's 2 ln 7 plus c. So that's how you can find the antiderivative of exponential functions. Now, if you need to integrate a log expression, you could use this formula. The integral of log base d ax plus b dx. It's going to be ax plus b over a times log base d, absolute value, ax plus b. Now, this e is not, it's the constant 2.718. It's that special e number. And then plus c. 
Now, I created a video on this about how to use this formula, so I won't put any examples in this particular video. Instead, I'll post the link in the description section below where you can see how to use this formula and how to confirm your answer with, if I remember correctly, with integration by parts. But feel free to take a look at that video if you want. You can also find on YouTube if you type in integration of logs, organic chemistry tutor in the search bar, and that video should also come up as well. But that's how you can integrate logs directly using that formula. Now, the integral of sine x dx is negative cosine x plus c. The integral of sine ax plus b dx is negative cosine ax plus b divided by a plus c. So if we want to find the antiderivative of sine 6x, it's just going to be negative cosine 6x divided by a, a is 6, and then plus c. Likewise, if we want to find the integral of sine 9x plus 4, it's going to be negative cosine of what's inside, 9x plus 4, divided by a, a being 9, plus c. So the antiderivative of cosine x, this is sine x plus c. The antiderivative of cosine ax plus b, like sine, this is going to be sine, positive sine, not negative sine, ax plus b divided by a plus c. Now, this transformation, it works for the other trig functions like secant, tangent, cosecant and cotangent. So if you remember the base formulas, you could remember uh, that variation. The integral of cosecant cotangent, this is negative cosecant x plus c. The integral of secant tangent is positive secant x plus c. The integral of tangent is ln secant x plus c. Now this is also equal to negative ln cosine x plus c. There's a negative one here. If you move the negative one, to the exponent of cosine, it becomes 1 over cosine, which is secant x. So that's why you can write this equation in both forms. Now, very similar to tangent, the integral of cotangent is going to be ln sine x plus c, but you can also write it as negative ln cosecant x plus c using the reciprocal function. The integral of secant x is going to be ln secant x plus tangent x. By the way, I have videos on YouTube where if you type in the integral of secant x on a YouTube search bar, there's a video that it will explain how to go from here to there using certain integration techniques. You can also find those videos on my website, video-tutor.net, where you can get access to all of my playlists, like my algebra, trig, calculus, chemistry, physics playlists. And when you search that playlist, you should be able to find this video. Now, the integral of cosecant x is ln cosecant x minus cotangent x. Now, when you're doing integration by parts, you could use this formula. This comes from, you can derive this formula from the derivative of the product rule. The integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. 
I have a lot of videos that explain how to use this formula, so I won't cover it in this video. Now, for the triple integration by parts formula, it's this. It's u, v, dw is equal to u, v, w minus the integral of v, w, du minus integral u, w, dv. I also have a video explaining how to use that formula, too. Now, there's a lot of other formulas to cover. It'll be too much to cover it all in this video. But there's the reduction formulas, inverse trig. There's related formulas to inverse trig as well. And then you have the table of integrals, which contain even more formulas. There's also trig substitution as well. I'm going to post all of that in the formula sheet. So feel free to take a look at the formula sheet if you want those additional formulas as well. But I'm going to stop it here. And thanks for watching.